The war is being fought in Ukraine, but all eyes are on two separate meetings. France's Emmanuel Macron is meeting with China's Xi Jinping in Beijing, while Russian President Vladimir Putin is hosting his close ally, Belarusian counterpart Alexander Lukashenko. So let's start with the big meeting that is taking place in the Chinese capital. Now Macron held talks with Xi Jinping and relayed a message to the president that Emmanuel Macron and Europe is counting on China to bring Russia back to its senses. Just a day ago, the French president said that Beijing can actually play a pretty big role in finding a path for peace in this conflict. He also welcomed China's willingness to commit to a resolution. The hopes, however, were dampened soon. Moscow poured cold water on prospects of a Chinese mediation, and it said that they have no choice but to, in fact, press on with its offensive in Ukraine. With peace being discussed on the one hand, the other topic that has also dominated the headlines over the course of this last week is about the deployment of tactical nuclear weapons. We must strictly abide by our solemn commitment not to use nuclear weapons and not to resort to nuclear war, oppose the use of biochemical weapons under any circumstances, to oppose armed attacks on civilian nuclear facilities such as nuclear power stations and to restart peace talks as soon as possible. All international treaties on the subject should be respected and under no circumstances should there be any deployment of nuclear weapons outside the territory of nuclear armed states, especially in Europe. While Xi Jinping and Macron have asserted their stance on the use of nuclear weapons, something has been brewing in eastern Ukraine. Now, Putin met Lukashenko just days after Russia announced that it will be deploying its nuclear arsenal in Belarus. The Putin hosted Lukashenko for talks in Russia where the deployment will expectedly be discussed. Russia has not given a clear timetable as to when it will begin moving its tactical nuclear weapons to Belarus. But Putin has said that the construction of storage facilities will be complete by July. Meanwhile, Kremlin has justified its nuclear deployment plans in Belarus. Spokesperson Dmitry Peshkov has said, and I quote him here, it is NATO that is actually expanding towards Russia and not Russia that is taking its military infrastructure towards the borders of NATO. If the deployment were to happen, then it will be the first time since the collapse of the Soviet Union that Russia would have deployed its nuclear arsenal outside of its borders. While diplomacy plays out on all sides, what's of course to watch here is as to where this war is headed. Is there a possibility of ceasefire because behind the scenes, there are hectic parleys which are presently underway and also what is happening by this visit by Emmanuel Macron is that at least Europe appears to be more willing to talk. Now, part of Xi Jinping's 12-point peace plan is, is something that's been lauded by Emmanuel Macron or is the talk of nuclear deployment in Belarus going to take tensions way higher? These are some extremely prickly issues and we'll try explore a few answers here and to give us more perspective in terms of is there a possibility of a ceasefire or are things likely to get worse in the coming days we are being joined by retired colonel rich alpson he's joining us live on this broadcast he's currently a senior fellow at the atlantic council and also the jamestown foundation uh now mr alpson thank you very much indeed for taking time out and speaking to us here on beyond and the question that i want to ask you is this you know, what is significant is what was said by Emmanuel Macron, where he said that he hopes and he counts on China to bring Russia back to its senses. You know, as, as an important European leader, the question that I want to ask you is, is Europe now relying on China to try and get a breakthrough for a possible ceasefire in Ukraine? Well, uh, good evening. It's uh, good to be with you and uh, your viewers. Uh, look, I, I think uh, France is a nuclear power and as an important uh, leading country in Europe has an important role in uh, talking to the Chinese about these things. The United States and Europe have, as we have seen over the past year and a half, pretty limited leverage over the Russians in terms of changing their calculus through diplomacy and through discussions. We've uh, got fairly limited economic relations with Russia. 
especially after the war and the onset of sanctions. So in terms of leverage, certainly the Chinese have leverage. And if we can get the Chinese, if we as a collective West can, uh, through discussions, convince Xi, uh, Xi to use his friendship with Putin, shall we say, as well as the economic levers and mutual interests that those two countries feel, to uh, to consider negotiations and perhaps to to realize that his offensive war has failed, then that's a very good thing. As as of now, other countries, uh, the Germans and and so forth, that have maintained, uh, even the Turks who have ex engaged in extensive dialogue and trying Absolutely. to coax. Russia into uh, negotiations have failed to do so. So I think it's a good move on Macron's part to try to do so. I don't have great uh, optimism that it will succeed because in fact, wars seldom end because of good sense talked to a, a combatant by friends. It's normally because a, a one, one side or the other is exhausted and needs to sue for peace. I think, I think you've made an important point there. Wars seldom end because you know the warring parties see some sense or rather see that there is no sense in continuing to fight. Uh, but Colonel Audzin, you know, I also want to ask you about this recent development of the Russians wanting to deploy their tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus. Clearly what's happening is that the nuclear map of Europe is expanding. The Russians contend that the Americans have stationed nuclear weapons on European soil in five different bases. And therefore, they say that it is the United States of America that is actually stoking tensions by expanding the frontiers of NATO military lines ever closer to Russia, which is what has resulted in this war. How, how do you think the West, in fact, sees this? Do you think NATO would be willing to look out of the security concerns that Russia has raised over the course of these last 13 months? Well, look, I think for the West, ultimately, we do have to find a, a, a solution to the a, a peace agreement at the end of this war that addresses certain Russian concerns, uh, even though Russia, in my view, and the view of most in the West, is the aggressor. And this was a war of choice, not a war of necessity for them. At the end of the day, if they're willing to fight for this, uh, rationality dictates that we find a solution that is mutually acceptable, uh, unless they just collapse as a regime, which I, I don't think there's any sign of. Look, when it comes to nuclear weapons, it's true. We've stationed, the United States has stationed uh, nuclear weapons on multiple countries. Now, this is not a new development. This goes back to the Cold War. Absolutely. And in fact, we've had strategic and tactical weapons in Europe for a long, long time. It's a game, the Russia, the Soviet Union, uh, had its tactical through strategic nuclear weapons. We had ours and we knew the signaling between the two. We knew sort of what the limitations were on behavior in terms of conducting exercises and in, in terms of making veiled threats, but knowing uh, that the other side was going to also counter escalate. So that there was a sort of a balance of terror in this. What's new in this is that the West is not talking about using tactical nuclear weapons. So this is strictly a one-sided uh, threat coming from Russia. Now, right. the, all games of the rules from the Cold War, we have to dust off and look at what's the right way to deal with that. And, and frankly, if they are put into Belarus, they would put them in an exposed position where right. the U.S. and NATO would not necessarily need to counter them with, with nuclear weapons. We would have strike, conventional strike, that could actually immobilize and render those weapons unusable. So I, I don't think it's a smart move on the part of Russia, but they're, they're not entirely wrong that NATO has expanded. And frankly, Absolutely. NATO was looking for a purpose for several years. Ironically, Russia is the impetus for the new expansion where we see uh, Finland joining and then Sweden is, is a, a possible aspiring country. Right. At the end of the day, Russia is gonna have to have some assurance that Ukraine is not gonna represent an offensive threat to it. It didn't help that they called the Ukrainians Nazis and tried to uh, deny that the Ukrainians exist as a nation or a state. That simply was not a serious argument. There is you know, a serious I, I argument. Think, I think you've actually you know, touched the nub of this issue because for in the long term, for peace to exist in Eastern Europe, the expanding frontiers of NATO will have to be addressed with and the security con concerns that Russia has raised about an expanding NATO frontier need to be addressed by the United States and its allies. Thank you very much indeed, Colonel Audzin, for joining us and getting us all those insights there. You're welcome. Thank you.